Hello, everyone. This is Whitney Wells from Star Hearth Astrology, and I'm here today to talk about the astrology of 2024. Welcome to Star Hearth Astrology. So, Happy New Year, everyone. What are we looking ahead at? We are looking at a year that is setting things up for the next mini era of time in terms of some major outward planetary shifts that are happening over the next three years with all of the outer planets changing signs. And the big one happens this year. We got a, a small preview last year while Pluto was in Aquarius and the emergence of AI. This year, we'll spend almost the entire year with Pluto in Aquarius, except for a small stint in the fall of Pluto's last dip back into Capricorn. And then it's going to be Pluto in Aquarius for 20 years. So that is a big shift. When Pluto changes signs, we get these big blooms of information. Pluto went into Capricorn in 2008, and there was a financial collapse. And with Pluto moving through Capricorn, we have seen the shadows of capitalism emerge and become monstrous and horrific. I think the term late stage capitalism was probably coined during Pluto's stint in Capricorn. We've had the Pluto return of the United States, the first one ever. And so now we're moving on into a new era. And I think AI is going to have a lot to do with it because Aquarius is the space of technology and forward thinking movements and Pluto bringing its transformative power, it ballooning things into their most monstrous forms or shrinking them down into almost nothing, right? I think we're going to see a lot of tumultuousness in, in tech and in AI and in what we can trust and what we can't trust. And so we'll see that. There's a shift this year into air signs from earth signs because not only does Pluto move from the Earth sign of Capricorn to Aquarius, but also Jupiter will move in May from Taurus, where he's just spent a year, into Gemini. We also have the South Node in Libra. So we have all three air signs well represented this year. And what we learn about them will be really important. If you tune into whichever houses are ruled by the air signs in your chart. For me, as an Aquarius rising, those are my identity houses, one, five, nine. And so you can kind of see these areas that maybe weren't as loud getting louder. What air signs can do is they can think abstractly and they can step outside of themselves. They have the gift of objectivity being able to see things from multiple perspectives. And so I think there's this kind of rarefication of identity that can happen. We can have more meaningful discourse. We're more willing to kind of show up and ask these bigger questions, especially when you have Pluto and Jupiter. And they'll form a trine between Aquarius and Gemini. So looking out for what happens with Jupiter trining Pluto in Gemini and a possible explosion of. So those are kind of the two big outer planet shifts. And we are looking at all of the Mercury retrogrades this year happening in fire signs. So coming out of Earth into fire, into air. Uh, Mercury has spent the last two years retrograding primarily in Earth signs, dipping into fire in this last retrograde of 2023, retrograding into Sag. So the beginning of this of 2024 and the end of 2024 will both happen with Mercury retrogrades in Sagittarius. 
I looked at the year in terms of quarters. So quarter one being January through March, quarter two, April through June, July through September, and then October through December. And when you look at those four chunks and kind of sort the major astrological events of 2024 into each of them, the the overwhelming majority of kind of big stuff and peak intensity is quarter two. And then probably quarter four and then quarter one, quarter three is kind of not a ton of stuff happening quarter three. We build up, we peak really in April. Really April is by and large the biggest month of 2024 in terms of things happening. And then because there's just so many of the biggest events of this year happen in April. So we should all be prepared for that. Pretty quickly, in January, we get Pluto's ingress into Aquarius. So by the end of January, we will have Pluto in Aquarius. And I'm wrestling with all of that stuff. February gives us a, a Venus-Mars conjunction, which is kind of middle headline, like definitely not on the first page, but we only get one every two years unless they get tangled in um in uh, Venus's retrograde cycle. So that's kind of a big deal. Their conjunction, it will be in Aquarius with Pluto in Aquarius. So I think that'll be interesting to kind of see because they'll both form conjunctions with Pluto and then can join each other. And we saw this back in the Venus retrograde in the winter of 21, 22, when they when they both conjoined Pluto and Capricorn and then had a conjunction, several conjunctions. So we get a little bit more of this deep intensity of Venus and Mars and what they're asking for from each other. They're conjoining in the sign of Aquarius, which really doesn't want to be tied down. So not really a romantic thing as much as rehashing how much freedom and what are the agreements in our relationships. What's the best way to move forward? Then in March, we start eclipse season. So that's the last week of March, we get our our Libra lunar eclipse. And so that kind of really pulls us into April and all of the shenanigans that happen in April. So we'll get a Libra lunar eclipse. This will be the culmination from the October 14th, 2023 solar eclipse. So that lunar eclipse will show us how far we've come in the stories that started out in October. And then we'll go all the way back around, obviously, by the fall. But so that brings us into eclipse season, which is just stuffed, kind of full with stuff. Because we get this solar eclipse that is being called the second Great American Eclipse on April 8th. It's a solar eclipse conjunct Chiron. So right deep in our wounding collectively around wounds around the authentic and spontaneous self. But happening at the same time as that eclipse, it... Mars and Saturn are perfecting a conjunction. And this is really significant because, again, it only happens two years, every two years. But everybody went into lockdown when they conjoined in Aquarius in 2020. And they had a second conjunction in Aquarius in 2020. But this is their first conjunction in Pisces. And so even though it's not really an aspect to the eclipse, it's ruling the eclipse, right? Mars as the ruler of Aries is the ruler of this eclipse conjunct the greater malefic in Pisces. And so that really has me kind of gritting my teeth for what is going to happen and what the potency of that can be. Remember, eclipses have the potency of going for the next 
six months really until we have the next lunation in that sign. So the implications of this are quite large and long lasting of this conjunction. And then in the background, we have Jupiter building up to a conjunction with Uranus that will perfect on the 21st. I think on the 21st, April 21st, April 20th. And that is definitely one of the headline events of 2024. So we've got both the Saturn Mars conjunction and a Jupiter Uranus conjunction happening basically in the eclipse chart for this April 8th eclipse. So that is really intense. So that Jupiter Uranus, right, I said is one of the biggest things that happens. And they have been co present in the sign of Taurus since Jupiter went in in May of last year, kind of, but kind of working separately. They haven't gotten too close to each other. Right. Jupiter is trying to come up with simple solutions. Uranus is still destabilizing this area of our chart that we like to have very stable. I think, right, the stages to watch <laughs> during this conjunction are going to be cryptocurrency. I think our food industry is going to start looking really interesting. Right. Jupiter, in some ways, is providing upgrades to wherever it's transiting in your chart. It's trying to improve things and Uranus is trying to shake things up. So when you get those happening together, right, we're getting big changes in this area that doesn't really like to change Taurus. So that will be really exciting. And we'll be talking about that more as we go on with everything leaning into 2024. Okay. So we will get. Those. And that's really kind of what I'm talking about in terms of the wildness of April and kind of all of those things happening in the space of a month. We will also have a Mercury retrograde at that time tied up in that eclipse. The Mercury retrograde happens in Aries. So the Aries part of your chart is like, so figure out what whole sign that's in and really be paying attention to those topics of that house because there's a lot of energy and drama happening there this year then later in may jupiter goes into gemini so passes through and goes into gemini and will be there for about a year so jupiter and gemini right is bringing a lot of big ideas but these aren't necessarily coherent ideas. Remember, Gemini is a sign that is ruled by Mercury that breaks things down into smaller pieces. So I think we'll get a lot of interesting things. I think trying to figure out what's true and what's real is going to be complicated and, and interesting to watch. Again, we're talking about an air sign that's closely aligned with, you know, social media and the internet and our ability to share things very quickly. So we'll see that as a, as a kind of topic come into more significance. I think Jupiter, you know, I mean, the tendency for astrologers is to talk about Jupiter like he's like Santa Claus and he shows up in a house and gives you things. But I think that Jupiter gives you things because Jupiter focuses your attention in some areas, right? It's a teacher. And what we're paying attention to, we're noticing a lot more about. So the gifts of those areas, we can connect with a lot better. So when Jupiter changes your, its focus from your Taurus house to your Gemini house, the topics of the Gemini house are going to become much more interesting and much more expansive. Um, and we're going to be looking for new and fun possibilities. Uh, then we head into the kind of sleepy quarter three. We get um, a Jupiter-Saturn square, the first of three. The first two will happen in 2024. The third one won't happen until 2025. That is an important moment because we are seeing how far we've come. It's the first square after the conjunction. The conjunction happened in 
December of 2020 at zero degrees of Aquarius. And so by this point, we've got, we've come to the first square where we kind of check in like, okay, so this grand design and this brave new world order that was dreamt of, how far are we? What's it really looking like? Where are we going to have to cut back some projects for the budget? Right. This is it's a kind of crisis in terms of having to make decisions about how far we're going to be able to go or not. So it's a little pinchy, but definitely not super painful. I don't think in a big way. We will also have a Jupiter Mars conjunction in Gemini. So when Mars finally catches up with Jupiter, that will be in Gemini in mid August. So, right, hopefully we're going to come up with some solutions. I think it's going to be interesting to see what Mars does in Gemini. Remember, Mars had a big retrograde in Gemini um, in the fall of 2022. So it'll be Mars's first time revisiting that sign since then. Kind of seeing, right, we'll see if Twitter changes its name again there will also be a mercury retrograde in leo starts in the beginning of virgo retrogrades back into leo so again we've got all of this more fire activation so quarter three is kind of our gemini leo activation quarter all other things being equal yeah and that kind of brings us september i mean there's the planets start kind of stationing retrograde um, Uranus will station retrograde at the very end of Taurus. Uranus and Neptune are both at the very ends of Pisces and Taurus. They're kind of looking like they're going to come into a perfect sextile. And I think we'll start feeling it, but it doesn't actually complete until 2025 because Uranus gets really close and then stations retrograde and then they are going to retrograde back at the same time in such a way that they don't hit that exact sextile. At the end of September, there is a shift in that we get our first Pisces lunar eclipse. So that is already bringing us out of the Aries Libra eclipse cycle. And by 2025, we'll be completely out of it. The nodes are still going to stay in Aries and Libra until the, the beginning of 2025. But we get our first Pisces eclipse and i think that will be a really interesting change in focus pulling more of our experience to the house of pisces that has that has been brought back into focus or realms um by saturn's time there and also hearkening to that saturn neptune conjunction that will happen in pisces in 2025 so we're starting to get a North Node eclipse in Pisces and see what is going on there. And then quarter four, where the eclipse season straddles the quarters. So then we're still in eclipse season. We've got our final solar eclipse in Libra. It happens at 10 degrees of Libra. It's kind of sending us out on that final new big story. And then the full moon in Aries that happens in October is not eclipsed. So then we're out and we have our first uneclipsed Aries lunation in, in 18 months. By then, we are headed into what will be election season in the U.S. We'll have election day. Should be quite fraught. I'm wondering. Yeah. Yeah. Who is actually going to be on the ballot by the time we get there, given everything that's going on? I think it's going to be a wild ride this year politically. And we are building up towards a Mars retrograde that will happen, that will kind of straddle the year, but it will begin in, in December. And so we, we enter the pre-shadow of the Mars retrograde in November. And I bet we're going to see manifestations of it being tied in with the election. Mars is going to station retrograde in Leo, which is, of course, Trump's rising sign. I'm not sure how 
yeah, what that's going to show up like. And then it's going to retrograde back to 17 degrees of cancer. And so the amount of disempowerment, of frustration, of grief, of, of all of these kind of uncomfortable ends to our power that come up during Mars retrogrades is going to kind of finish the year and Mercury is going to be back retrograding in Sag. And that's what we've got. Those are the biggest thing, the biggest transits that I pulled for you guys for 2024. And we'll break it down as we go through them. Thank you for being here. Thanks for watching this. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. And I hope you have a happy new year.